what's going on guys in today's video um, we're going to be going off to test out the Kodak Portra 400 film stock now there's a few differences between shooting digital and film uh, as I've come to learn um, my first experience shooting with my Canon AE-1 I went to New York and I shot a bunch of photos that I thought were really cool and I got them back and it turns out that and when I got them back they were all the sky was exposed properly, but the shadows weren't. Um, so all the images were really muddy uh, and they didn't look very good. So um, I did some research online and basically come to find out that when you're shooting film, it's a little bit different than digital. With digital, you wanna make sure that you're not blowing out the highlights because the highlights will lose detail. Um, and it's really hard to get that detail back. Um, however, it's easier to increase the exposure with software. Um, so that's why it's better to expose for the highlights and bring the shadows up with software. Generally, uh, when you're shooting digital, you can overexpose the highlights in film and it's not gonna look that bad. I mean, you might not really even notice the loss of detail. Um, however, if you underexpose the shadows, you're gonna see severe grain, you're gonna see minimal detail it's gonna look muddy it's gonna look gross I mean I want to go out today and shoot a couple images um, at even exposure and then shoot one two and three stops overexposed and then do two stops underexposed um, that way I can just get a feel for what kind of exposure I should be shooting uh, in different lighting scenarios based on what the light meter in my particular camera is giving me because I want to be able to feel confident when I'm going out that I'm going to get the image or the result that I'm looking for. This is our first spot. We're gonna take a total of four images. We're gonna do one at regular exposure, one at one stop overexposed, and then one at three stops overexposed, and then one at uh, two stops underexposed. So we're gonna go ahead and shoot this and see how it looks. So I've got my second frame set up here. Um, actually, I decided that I was gonna do a total of six shots. So I'm gonna do one at normal exposure, one, two, and three stops overexposed, and then I'm gonna do one and two underexposed. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire off these shots and uh, we'll uh, check them out after. Uh, third spot here we got a pretty special location now I picked out this scene because we got a darker area in the foreground and we got a lighter area in direct sunlight and the sky is obviously highly lit so we're gonna see how exposing the image uh, to different exposures is gonna make the overall picture look
right, so that does it for the shooting portion of the vlog. It's insanely cold out, it's like 22 degrees, and the Bills are playing today, so I figured I'd cut it short. I was looking to get six frames, ended up only getting four different frames, but that's enough to test the exposure, so. Now we gotta get the photos developed, and then we'll look at them on the computer. Alrighty guys, I just got the photos back from the lab and I'm just gonna go ahead and do a quick analysis here. Now I'm by no means an expert, so I'm not gonna waste your time uh, trying to pretend like I am or rambling on. Uh, we're just gonna go through this quickly here uh, and just kind of look at the results that we got from shooting different exposures. So we'll start with the first image here. This is actually overexposed by a stop, maybe two stops. I'm not entirely sure. I also found out that I think, I'm pretty sure they use a scanner and set it to like automatic settings. Uh, so this doesn't really give us an accurate depiction of the differences in, in shooting over and underexposed. Um, you can also see that the saturation varies in, in weird ways. So I'm not sure if that's maybe my camera, which I doubt, or if that's just something with the scanning process. So I, I tend to believe that that's what it is. Um, but with the first one, this is uh, the image that's a, a stop, maybe two stops overexposed. You can see there's good detail in the shadows. Um, the highlights are pretty overexposed, but um, overall, I mean, the shadows look good and overall the colors look really good. Now, when you go to the underexposed shot, you start to get the highlights, you know, you get some detail back, but you start to get this greenish hue um, and it kind of, the shadows start to look pretty muddy. Um, the detail seems to go away. Now this is a pretty even exposure here. Overexposing definitely gives you an overall better look. If we look at the next example, this is overexposed. Um, you can see here that the sky, there's not a lot of detail left. You could probably pull some of that back if you wanted to use a program uh, like Lightroom or Negative Lab Pro or something like that. Um, but, you know, overall, I mean, the shadows, they have really good detail. They're not really grainy. Uh, and overall, it looks pretty good. Um, now this one is more overexposed and this one is underexposed. And so I think this is important to, to look at because this is what happens when you underexpose. You start to get these, all this noise, uh, the colors shift, and on this particular film stock, it looks like they're shifting towards green. The highlights, they still look pretty blown out. You don't really gain much by underexposing, um, like you would maybe in digital. Um, and then the shadows just look really terrible. So um, overall, I mean, I would take, this was probably the standard uh, that the camera would have picked for settings. I don't necessarily dislike the overexposed look. Um, however, it kind of does look like it's shifting more towards magenta. I definitely like the shadow detail better rather than the highlight detail because you don't really notice it too much and it's not like digital where you overexpose and you're gonna blow out the entire image. This is probably the biggest example where you just wanna be sure not to underexpose. So if you're in a high contrast situation, you're probably better to go a little bit over in terms of exposure than under because under I wouldn't really even post this image I don't think this is salvageable to be honest now on to the next setting this is probably the highest contrast uh, scene that I came across uh, this was shot at the automatic settings and you can see here the shadows they don't look the best the highlights they look not terribly blown out but overall I mean this is a pretty high contrast shot I think it does add, I think it does pretty good as is, you know, just in, in automatic mode. This is overexposed. You gain a good amount of detail in the shadows. Um, and you definitely see some less green. However, in the highlights, you're starting to get some, you know, it definitely looks pretty overexposed and I'm not sure I would make the trade off. I mean, you definitely gain, but you seem to kind of lose in the highlight area in this particular case. And this is two stops overexposed and this is definitely going too far. Now I do want to show this is underexposed. And as you can see, you know, you're shifting towards green. The highlights are still as exposed as they were in the other pictures. Um, however, now you're really looking at muddy shadows and this isn't really a great image. So once again, I would take honestly all of these overexposed shots over this underexposed shot. 
Um, and then this is our final scene. Uh, this is normal at the standard settings. It looks pretty good um, as compared to the next images, which this is the overexposed shot. I personally would take this because I'm not really too concerned about the highlight detail loss. I mean, if you zoom in here, you could see that the, you know, the highlights, it's not bleeding over like it might in digital and it doesn't really look too bad. I mean, there's not much of a difference between this in terms of highlights and in this shot. And I actually really like the shadow detail in this particular one. Uh, so I would definitely take the, the one stop overexposed uh, in this particular case. Now this is the underexposed shot. And as you can see again, we're getting a lot of grain. The shadows just have a poor look to them and you can definitely see that, you know, for what you, what you gain in, in the sky detail, you lose big in the shadows. So really, I mean, all these examples kind of show you just don't underexpose. You're better off overexposing. That way you can get good shadow detail with minimal noise and you're not going to lose too much in terms of highlights. Um, and overall to make the image look a lot better. So, so anyways, I hope that was helpful for you guys. If you found that entertaining, feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscribe for more content like this. And uh, I hope you guys have a good day.